Good evening. It's time to begin 577 in your hymnals. We gather together. Page 577. Let's all stand, shall we? Page 577. We gather together to ask the Lord's blessing. on the last. We all do extol the leader triumphant and pray that thou still our defender will be. Let thy congregation stay in tribulation. Thy name be ever praised, O Lord, make us Have a seat. Grab your Bible. Let's read some scripture. Psalm 62. Psalm 62 and Psalm 63. We're going to be different and read two chapters. Say, I'll get mad and leave. I'll give you better reasons than that to leave. Psalm 62. Psalm 62. The uh, maybe I shouldn't tell you this story. Sunday night, somebody was practicing, and the song was so good it was overwhelming. In fact, can we say? Carol's not here, but Carol Brown. Carol Brown was crying. It was just like all you all left, and then God showed up. So when John was done, I just had to stop. I just stopped. It was just like captivating. So. I said, you guys need to sing that. They're singing that. You singing that Sunday? I said, you need to sing that twice. Sing it. Stop. Sing it again. Say, well, that's not how they do it. Who, who's the they? If, if, you know, if you do other things twice, Psalm 62 and Psalm 63. Go ahead, read ahead. Get it out of your system. You win. We'll get you a gift card. To... Psalm 62, verse 1. Truly, my soul waiteth upon God. Get that? Truly. My soul waiteth upon God. From him cometh my salvation. Verse 2, he only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. How long will you imagine mischief against a man? Ye shall be slain, all of you. As a bowing wall shall you be, and as a tottering fence. They only consult to cast him down from his excellency. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. Selah, think about it. Stop. Dwell on it. Verse 5, my soul, wait thou only upon God. Only. See the only? For my expectation is from him. He only is my rock. He said that in verse 2. And my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. Verse 7, in God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. 
Trust in him, verse 8, Psalm 62, verse 8. Trust in him at all times, ye people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Selah. Surely men of low degree are vanity, and men of high degree are a lie. To be laid in the balance, they are altogether lighter than vanity. Trust not in oppression, and become not vain in robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. God has spoken once. Twice have I heard this, that power belongeth unto God. Also unto thee, O Lord, belongeth mercy, for thou renderest to every man according to his work. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. But we think as David got older and one of his sons tried to steal the throne from him, we think this is the time. You know, nobody knows that. It's still good no matter when it's written, right? You've read the Bible when you really wanted to, and you've read the Bible when you really didn't want to, and it's still the Bible. But we think that David is running from his son. He will not oppose, strike back at his son, so he writes Psalm 62. Psalm 63, O God, he writes, Psalm 63, verse 1, O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee, my flesh longeth for thee, in a dry and thirsty land where no water is, to see thy power and thy glory. So as I have seen thee in the sanctuary, because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Verse 4, Psalm 63, verse 4. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips when I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches, because thou hast been my help. Therefore, in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. Verse 8, my soul followeth hard after thee. Thy right hand upholdeth me. But those that seek my soul to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for foxes, verse 11. But the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone that sweareth by him shall glory. But the mouth of them that speak lies shall be stopped. Imagine David trying to encourage himself and move on and go on and trust God and see good and do the right thing. He, he didn't, you know, and that's what you and I have to do. We just have to listen to God. Don't listen to everybody else. Say, well, sometimes I can get good advice. The sometimes is the problem. You know, from God, you always get good advice. And yeah, I might be smart. And you may say, well, I think he can help me, but I'm, I'm sure if you get in this book, just take your time. Say, God, show me. He can, can he? Yeah. Did you ask him to save you? Did he? If you ask him to lead you and help you when you need it, he's not going to go, you know, I'm awfully busy right now. He's going to do it because he wants to. And we need to do that no matter what we're going through. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know all those things you don't want to talk about. I don't know all those things that are hard, overwhelming. But he does. He wants to be asked. He, want, he wants to help you. He wants you to truly turn to him and go, look, I don't know what to do. I need help. He can. Hey, trust me. He can. He wants to. He's, he's good at it. While we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. Hey, all of us were going, how can I be good? And God is going, sorry, that ain't going to work. I need to send Jesus. So he sent Jesus while we were yet sinners. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad that you know him? Aren't you glad you're here? I'm glad you're here. Aren't you glad that you can 
David said, I want to know you like I know you in the sanctuary. Church is always good, isn't it? You always leave here, and man, music's good. Everybody's dressed up. Everybody looks good. Nobody's crabby. Most people aren't crabby. You know, everything just kind of flows along, and you know we're starting at a certain time, and you know you're going to get out eventually. And so you just go, wow, I, I, just, I just need to hear from God. Right? Right? I mean, I don't know what you think eternity is, but I'm pretty sure God's going to be there. I'm pretty sure it's all going to be wound up in him. It isn't going to be, well, I, I'm going to take a break. No break. No break. All about him. Pray with me. Your head bowed, your eyes closed. Ask the Lord tonight before we pray. Your head bowed, your eyes closed. Ask the Lord tonight talk to you. I don't know if you say that. I don't know if you think he can. I don't know if you really want him to. You say, Lord, would you talk to me tonight? Would you challenge me? Would you help my heart to be soft and tender? Open my eyes. Open my heart. God, it's the middle of the week. I need it. You're as much God tonight as you were on Sunday. You're as much God now as you were when you created the heavens and the earth. And I have access to you, so I need you. I want you. Please work in me. Say something like that. Heavenly Father, we are indeed blessed. We are honored to be called by your name. What a thrill for me to be labeled as a Christian. What a great, miraculous happening that Jesus came into my life. And you said he'll be there forever. Lord, would you work tonight in my heart? Would you challenge me, speak to me? Move me closer to you? God, I want to give you permission to shove me, drag me to where I ought to be. But help me to be tender. You kept saying through your word, he that hath ears to hear. Let him hear. And I pray tonight that I won't look like I'm hearing, but that I will truly, truly hear. Speak to the young kids as they hear the Bible tonight. Speak to the teens as they hear the Bible tonight. Thank you for this gathering. Thank you that we can be here. Thank you for the Bible. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you that you're as much God as you've ever been. You said you are the Lord, you change not. Thank you that we have you. I pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Page 546, Just a Closer Walk with Thee. 546. Amen. to the 
Careful what you're saying. God's keeping track. We all forget he doesn't. August 18th, that's the, I can't believe that August is moving so fast, but it is. There's an Awana meeting in the evening. If you're involved, want to be involved, that's this Sunday night. The next Sunday night, the following Sunday, there's an afterglow. Awana, get that date so you know and you pray about it. The 11th, Awana starts if you would like to host an afterglow, there's a sign-up list. You have a prayer list. Mr. Jonathan is handing them out. Would you add a couple of things to it, please? Missionaries that we support, of course, Missionary of the Week are the Love Days. But would you add for Travel Mercy, the Damrons, Eric, his wife, Tisa, their son, Patrick, are traveling to the country of Colombia. So would you pray, as they're going to be there a couple weeks, pray that God would give them safety and use them. And, uh, of course, the love days, Steve Wesco at Fellowship, pray for these guys. And, you know, let's just say it out loud. Sometimes you may see a church you used to go to I hope if you hate me, you'll still pray for me. I, I'm not saying you hate where you left. I'm just saying we we got to figure out how to get along better. We don't get along real well. Like, we all act like we're in competition. What are we going to do when we get to heaven? I mean, there's not going to be any fences So let's just love each other, pray for you. No, we don't always agree. I don't agree with myself. So you pray. And uh, also add Lisa McFarland has an infection, of course, still dealing with the loss of her husband, Larry. Pray about that for her, would you please? And now struggling with an infection. She's on antibiotics, so Pray about that for her. Casey Kaufman goes in this week. They postponed it. He heads down south to Indy to try to figure out a new treatment to treat the cancer in his blood. And then everybody else needs prayer. How many of you need prayer? How many of you, you want someone praying for you? You, you? you be faithful to this, and God will... Get someone to pray for you. Pray with me, would you, just however it works for you? Lord Jesus, we're coming in your name. We're not coming in anything we have. I'm not coming to you tonight because I'm the pastor. I'm coming in Jesus' name. I'm not coming because I'm the preacher. I'm not coming because I've been saved a while. I'm coming in Jesus' name. He's my Savior. He's my rock. He's everything. He's my helper. He's my guide. He's my strength. He's my shepherd. I even need help tonight, God, as I pray. You and I know that. Everybody ought to, but you and I know that. And we think of Eric and Tisa and Patrick traveling to Columbia. We pray for safety. We pray that you'll open doors. I'm sure that they're going because there uh, are doors that are open. But, Lord, it may be that more doors need to open, so meet their needs financially for that trip, use them spiritually. May it be a blessing to them and that, of course, they would bless others. We pray for Lisa McFarland as she battles this infection. We pray for the battle of adjusting to life now with Larry in a different place. He's not gone. He's in heaven. We know where he is. So until she catches up with him, 
help her through this time. Uh, Lord Jesus, uh, thank you. A and I'm, I'm assuming everyone in this room is born again. I'm assuming that they're here tonight not because they're trying to get born again, but because you saved them. And they want to worship you and give you everything they can because you gave everything for us. And there are people on this list who need salvation. And we pray that in some way, through family, friends, me, send me, run me into them, God, do whatever you want. But I pray they'll hear the gospel. I pray that you'll get their hearts ready, that their hearts would be hungry and thirsty for the gospel. Lord Jesus, there are those that can't come, that want to come, that we call shut-in. Uh, bless them especially. Lord, for the people with cancer, for KC, who uh, maybe already is uh, headed to Indy, give the doctors wisdom. And of course now, with his wife being uh, afflicted with this brain tumor, we pray that they'll be able to work on that whenever, and that you'll show them how to trust you and believe you, and uh, what are they supposed to learn, what are they supposed to do. Lord, I'm thankful that when you uh, knocked Saul of Tarsus down on the ground and said, hey, you're picking on me. He didn't fight. He just said, what wilt thou have me to do? Lord, I pray that each of us would say the same. What do you want me to do? Lord, you're God. You're, you're the one that will answer to. So what do you want us to do? Show each of us, Lord, what you want us to do. Show us how to be busy for you in, in this church, but all the time telling people, showing people, making it plain and easy for people to want to be a Christian. Lord, I pray for uh, our uh, preacher of the week. Thank you for uh, Brother Wesco at Fellowship. Lead him, guide him, empower him, stir him. God, give him wisdom. Help him to be uh, totally obedient to you, that he'll listen to you and not try to please anybody but you. I pray for the love days the same way. Thank you for their many years of ministry in Spain. Help them through their physical affliction. And uh, Joy's mom, as she deals with physical afflictions, I pray that you'll encourage them through this and use them. Thank you and meet their needs. Lord Jesus, for those who are trying to recover, they're trying to get strong, they're trying to get back to church, they're trying to get over whatever they're uh, battling. Lord, just show them that you're bigger. You, you are the resurrection and the life. And if that's what you are, then there's no affliction, there's no cancer, there's no disease, there's no problem that we'll go through or, or have that you're not bigger than. And we need to trust you, Lord. You said if you don't have faith, it is impossible to please you. So we want to believe you for what you can do. And I want to believe you tonight for what you can do in our lives. Do something great, mighty, and spiritual in our life. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Ushers are coming. If you, we just want to give you an opportunity to give. You know, God made an interesting comment before he closed the Old Testament. He said, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house. There's too many TV preachers trying to rob God of what belongs to him. Send us your money. We'll send you a hanky. I'll send you one for free. 
Bring ye all, not send, not take. Bring. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house. Imagine that. Imagine that. God will take care of you if you do what he wants you to. You don't have to take care of him. He, he said, if I were hungry, I wouldn't tell you. So you just, you just give. You just take care of him. Sometimes it's like, wow, I could use this. Yeah, but you, you, you could use God a lot more. So you just, you just give. Say, you, you mad? Yeah, I'm mad. I'm mad about the hucksters on TV. Yeah, you bet I'm mad. Look at this face. They're, look, they're crooks. Say all of them? Almost. God's plan is not the airwaves. God's plan is local churches like this. I just thought you need a refresher course. Say, but man, there are people, they're reaching people. Do it and don't ask for money. I mean, if we're going to teach people the Bible, then let's teach them what God says. 1 Corinthians 16, same thing. Take your money to church. Say, don't people get mad at you over there? I've, no one's ever gotten mad at me. I didn't write that. They're not mad. When they get mad about something I said, they're not mad at me. They're mad at what God said. Right? Well, the church doesn't need it. That's not your problem. Just do what God said. Hey, do what God said. So I, what, we're okay. We, she, we're not broke yet. Just want you to be blessed and be obedient to God. Hey, I want you to tell people that there's a Savior. That should be a part of your life. Hey. That shouldn't be a duty. Man, you should want to tell people. I'm glad I'm saved. Remember what Paul said? I'm not ashamed. Not ashamed. Don't be ashamed. You ought to read your Bible. Say, I got two chapters in tonight. Those two don't count. Those are not yours. You can't count those. You got to do them on your own. And you got to pray on your own. Pray with me. Dear Lord, thank you that you made us responsible to take care of your house. We want to do a good job. We want to do it right. We don't want to make a big deal out of it, but we want to make as big a deal about it as you want us to. I just want to do the right thing. I don't want someone to say, well, I'm, I'm going to send it to David Jeremiah. He's got such a big ministry. Lord, I pray that we'll, we'll be obedient to you and that we're so good at fussing with you, Lord. I know we're good because I'm good at it. I pray that we wouldn't fuss with you. I pray that we would just be submissive. We're not good at that. But we need to be good at that. We need to be submissive to you, to your word, to what you want. Submissive when we read the Bible. Submissive when we pray. Submissive when we witness. Submissive when we give. Submissive when we come to church. Some people come to church and they act like they're just waiting to go. I pray that they would be submissive to the church service, to the preaching, to whatever's said, that you might be able to use something, and we're not smart enough to know 
when you're going to do it, if you're going to do it, how you're going to do it. So we're just here waiting for you to challenge us and speak to us. Do that. Lord, do that, please. I pray this. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, page 579, the lily of the valley. Page 579, let's all stand, shall we? I have found a friend in Jesus, he's everything to me. He's the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. Hallelujah's in there. Last verse. Amen. He will never, never leave me, nor yet forsake me. While I live my faith in you, this blessed faith. A wall of fire above me, I've nothing to fear. With his penalty, my hungry soul shall live. Then sweep me. Be seated, Pastor. Amen. Some of you are going to have quite an adjustment when you get to heaven. You're going to feel like you're in a Pentecostal church. First Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. Really, you're going to get there and go, man, I didn't know it would be this wild up here. It won't be wild. It'll just be normal. Hey, I mean, when you see Jesus, how can you just go, oh, I thought he'd be taller? Huh? First Thessalonians, first Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, first Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. Man, I'd like to read. I, I, I'm looking at my notes. I'm looking at the chapter. Ah, let's try it. Verse 1. Let's try it. We're going to the end of it, but I want to, it'll help. Then that'll be three chapters you got in today. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians. Thessalonians chapter 5. You, you're aware, you know this. Paul wrote this to Thessalonica because people were challenging what they thought, what they believed, what had happened. What if, what if people kept hammering to you? No, the Lord's already come. No, the Lord, no, he's already come. You missed him. Pretty soon you'd begin to think, boy, I hope I didn't. And so everything Paul writes in the first book to the Thessalonican church and second book is to 
guide them, teach them. Fifth chapter, First Thessalonians, fifth chapter, verse 1. But, he writes, he just told us about the rapture. Chapter 4. He just told us, verse 13, can you do that? Got a minute? Kind of jump around. If you, if you, for me it's easy, if you got to turn a page, I'm sorry for the extra effort that you have to exert. But chapter 4, verse 13, he said, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. But. That means, doesn't matter what you heard, here's what God said. But. Same with chapter 5, verse 1. But. He still has to, you know, kind of. What's a good word? Remember when your kids needed a little motivation to do the right thing? Huh? Get in there. Get going. Did your mom ever help you out of bed in the morning? My mom always, if I didn't get up, she'd pull on my toes. That's why I'm so anti-toe at this point in my life. I wear my shoes till I go to bed. I don't go barefoot. That's for hillbilly. I, I, I'm... Somebody talks about toe. Right now as I'm talking about it, if you could see an x-ray of the inside of my shoes, my toes are going like this because I don't even like talking about them. She would come in the morning, time to get up. She couldn't turn the light on because it was on all night anyways. Oh, Freddy Cap Vito, yeah, I know. I'd sleep with the light on. So she didn't turn the light on. It's bright enough. She'd go, time to get up, get out of bed. And when I didn't, she would start pulling on my toe. Say, she do that all the time? No, just to motivate me to get up. And so he's trying to motivate them. Paul writing, motivate. He wants them to be motivated to live like the Lord's coming. Don't quit. Don't, don't back up. Don't stop. Don't stall. Keep going. And then he explains to them. And as he ends that chapter, chapter 4, he says, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. In other words, tell each other. Be there close. Make sure this is known. These are good words. Chapter 5, verse 1. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord... So cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Verse 4. But ye, therefore, brethren, but ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Verse 5, ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, serious about what's happening. Hey, watching, knowing he's coming, watching, living like he's coming. You say, can we laugh till he comes? Man, I'm laughing till he comes. I'm excited that he's coming. I'm not sad that he's coming. I want him to come. I'm excited about it, but I'm watching and I'm sober about it. I, 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 I believe it. I'm living like I believe it. He could come. He could come. Say, well, what if he doesn't? Well, let me ask you a question. What if he does? We're always, always going, it's half full. Glass is half full. Why can't it be half empty? Uh, wait, half empty. I'm... My wife wrote this sermon. She put that in there. She put that wrong. Putting on, verse 8, the breastplate of faith and love. 
and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God, verse 9, God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us. Isn't that good? I, I just love when the Bible has these Cool little phrases. Who died for us. Are you living for him? He died for you. He just wants us living for him. Verse 10, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also Ye do. So they already did it, but he said, keep doing it. Don't stop. You say, sometimes you repeat yourself. I know that. Right? I know that. And, verse 12, we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, and be at peace among yourselves. <laughs> why, why? You know why most Christians leave a church? Because of another Christian. It's not doctrinal. Hello? We, we, we get offended. We don't like this, like that, and so, so both uh, people are people. Since Adam and Eve, they've always been the same. Every church, hey, you you leave here, go somewhere else. It's going to be a honeymoon for a while because it's new. And then you're going to go, wow, same kind of people. So that's why Paul makes that statement, verse 13, and be at peace among yourselves. Figure out how to be peaceful with each other. Hey, we're going to have to do it forever. Well, we'll be changed. Well, yeah, but he still says, and be at peace among yourselves, verse 14, now. He said, we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly. Comfort, different spelling, I know what you're thinking. Warn them that are unruly. Comfort the feeble-minded. Support the weak. Be patient toward all men. If every church member lived that last statement, our churches would be better. Amen. Come on. Be patient toward all men. Think of the times you've been cheated. Think of the times you've robbed yourself because you weren't patient. See that none, verse 15, see that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and all men. Have you ever heard about these business meetings? that erupt into a fight? I mean, not here, but they've had business meetings and locally, pastor punched a deacon. Really? Really? Are, are, really? I mean, so then we, Paul told the Corinthians, You've got a beef. Don't, don't go before the lost and tell them you can't get along so you're suing each other. Hello? We, we're big boys and girls, right? We can figure this all out. See, that's, that's why the Bible says if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his 
You think he said whip there. Take up his cross. Die. Hey, die. You can't hurt me. I'm dead. Can't hurt me. I'm dead. Following him. I'm dead. Say, you're, you're old. I, I'm dead. You're ugly. I'm dead. Say, you're long. You're long-winded. I'm dead dead you can't hurt me hey i'm not gonna let it happen i'm not gonna live life like that you know what they said to me see the way they looked at me hey 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 he said see that none verse 15 see that none render evil for evil unto any man but ever follow that which is good both among yourselves and all men all men Boy, if we treated lost people right, they'd turn to Christ. This is subliminal. I'm trying to brainwash you. If you would treat everyone, well, but they were. Just telling you what the Bible says. You know, you're going to have a hard life. You're going to have a hard eternity if you're going to just keep resisting God. Learn to say yes to God, and you'll, you'll do better. You'll be blessed. So then he goes into this barrage. Hey, verse 16, rejoice evermore. I hate that verse, don't you? I don't want to be told to do that. It ought, it ought to come, shouldn't it? What, isn't it an insult, huh? Sit up. You shouldn't have to be told. You should be sitting up, right? Shouldn't be slumping. It's not good for you. Rejoice evermore. If I'm a Christian, shouldn't I be happy? Should I have to be told to rejoice? That, that, you say, those are such nice statements. They're not nice statements. They're rebukes. What's he say next? Pray without ceasing. What stops you from praying? You get mad at God, quit praying. Don't get your way. Distracted, tired, come up with an excuse. Something stops us. Something makes us stop, cease. So he says, pray without ceasing. And then verse 18, and everything, give thanks. Man, I, I really hate that verse. I'm just being honest with you. But I love it because I'm a Christian. And I know that that's what God wants me to do. And trying to endeavor and give thanks. Why? For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Here's where it gets juicy. This is where I want you to, I want you to open. Now you can open your eyes. Ready? Verse 19. Quench not the spirit. Can I say something real quick? When you got saved, the Holy Spirit came in. And the only reason he doesn't work is if you quench him. He's ready to work. He's God. It's hard for God not to be God. It's hard for God to show up and we go, I wonder if God's here. And God, of course, says, man, I'm in you. Of course I'm here. But we, that's why he says this. Because we, think how scary that is. We can quench him. So what does he say? Boom. It's just a, a direct statement. Look at verse 9. Quench not the spirit. Okay. Verse 20, despise not prophesying. Verse 21, prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Verse 22, abstain from all appearance of evil. I'm stopping there. I'm going to pray. Father, I ask you tonight to make this personal to me. Make it personal to everyone in the room. Make it personal to anyone watching. I pray that, God, we, we would remember that the Bible, all the Bible's written to us at us, for us. We're supposed to get what we can, do what God wants. We're not supposed to try to explain it away. We're not trying to, uh, we're supposed to try to pick and choose what we think we ought to do. I know there are things tonight, God, you want to say to us, same to me, same to all of us, and I pray that we will be good, obedient children in whatever you say. I, I need your help. 
Hey, help me, God. I need your power. Work in our hearts. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I got to be careful. I, I'm just, my mind is so full and I want to help you. And, and you're going to think, you should have said this on Sunday. Uh, all right. I'm around a lot of Christians. I'm around you. I'm around others. Too many other Christians call me and want me to meet with them. So I've been around a lot of Christians. And I've noticed something. I've, I've noticed, I'm not going to put a time frame on it, but it's been a while. I've noticed that a lot of Christians have allowed their spiritual fire to go out. See, like that. See how quiet it is? Just, I'm sorry. I don't know what you want me to tell you. I mean, if your house is on fire, you're going to get mad if I try to get you out? That's also where you say, amen. I mean, th this is about you. This, I'm, not, this isn't, I'm not doing this for a grade. I'm not doing this because I'm supposed to and God's keeping track. And I didn't say, okay, I've got to preach 2,200 words. And yeah, that's a good one. I'm just saying to you, I'm noticing that 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 fire is gone. We're Christians, but it's like not hot. Are you going to heaven? Yeah. Yeah, you say that now. Somebody stopped you on the street. Hey, are you going to heaven? Well, I hope so. You hope so? I mean, our entire life is supposed to revolve around the fact that we're going to heaven. I, and I say that because verse 19, he says, quench not. And of course, that means, you know, to put out a fire. I, it's not sin. Sin isn't putting that fire out. It's two things. Say, is this a sermon and you're done? Nope. It's two things. Number one, it's distraction. We get distracted. People distract us. Things distract us. And we allow the Spirit of God not to burn in us because we're distracted. And number two, neglect. We don't have time with Him. We don't spend time in prayer. We don't spend time in the Bible. We don't spend time serving him, loving him, being in his house, saying, I need the preaching. I'm kind of tired, but I know I need the preaching. I'm kind of worn out. I'm kind of down, but I need the preaching. That's why we're here. You, you say, oh, I listen to preaching all week. I, excuse me, I'm sorry. It isn't working. Because you ought to be dancing around this auditorium. You ought to be so hot and on fire. I, mean, I read a lot of Christian books. It ain't working. Come on now. You read the book of Acts. How they lived in the book of Acts. You say, well, that was a different time. Same God. What a different time it was New Testament church. That's what we are. Seems like we're bored. Hey? Seems like we're bored. We try to fit God in around everything else. What are you doing in heaven? You think you're going to be working? Then God's going to go, you know, some of you just need to be busy. I'm going to get you a job. Our job in heaven full time will be him. And this is practice for that. So as I said, 
The more you do it, the better you do it now, the less shocking it will be when you get there. I mean, someone's going to get there and go, he really is here. I mean, yeah, he's there. It's where we're going. Some of us get frustrated if we don't get spiritual fast enough. It isn't really, I don't think it's hard to get spiritual. Might be hard to be spiritual because we've made it hard to get spiritual. Right? This whole book, I mean, God didn't say, okay, read that one, then I'll get you another one. It's this one. This one. You can talk to him. You can give something up. You can put special time aside. You can talk to him whenever you want. And you can get spiritual. See, it isn't hard to get spiritual. It's hard to be spiritual. Because we're not willing to do what we need to do to get spiritual. We just, we just... I see this resistance. We, we want our own way. That, that isn't going to work. We, we want what we want. I've always done it. That, man, I hear that. I'm, I'm telling you, the next time I hear that, I really am. I'm with people and they want to discuss, well, you know, I, I remember this and at our church and this. and I'm just going to spit on the table. And when they go, that is the grossest thing. I can't believe you did that. I'm going to say, that's because of what you said. Let's just, let's just be spiritual. Let's do all that we can do. I want my Christian life to be as exciting as it was when I first got it as it is where I'm at. I don't want it to be like singing. Here he goes again. Okay, here he goes again. This isn't a class. This isn't music theory. This is not entertained. This is not impressed. This is for him. Sometimes we just sing when we have to sing. Hey? I didn't want to tell you about them doing the special twice. I just wanted you to go through that and then go, what in the world was that? Now I told you I ruined it. But why is that wrong? We're just not used to it. We, and some of you, I'm sorry, you know I like to trip you and slap you in the face. Some of you, we're not used to doing it that way. Who's this were? I mean, all of a sudden we have to do it your way. Paul is, I, I, I don't know if you like them, I like them. They're, they're from verse 19 through 22. They're just very uh, definitive. They're very certain. They're short and sweet, easy to remember, simple to practice. Let's grab four things from there, can we? Number one, don't, number one, verse 19, don't exclude the spirit. Don't exclude the Spirit in your life. When Paul wrote to the church at Galatia, and he said, this I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Look up, look here. Walk in the Spirit. Here's what we think it means. We think it means we walk through life, and all of a sudden, sometimes we let the Spirit in. Up, I up, up, up. When he said he says walk in the spirit, that means that means don't take a step without the spirit. 
You say, well, what if it doesn't mean that? Then you're going overboard, and God will correct you when you get to heaven. I mean, I'd rather be overboard. I don't, I don't want to exclude the Spirit of God. I don't want to quench Him. That's what he's talking about there. He's talking about exclude, keeping him out of my life. Think of some of the stuff you watched on television this week. Did you exclude him? Do I look like your mother? Think of the, some of the things you looked at on your phone, on the pad, on the computer. Did you exclude him? I'll wait. Think of some of the music that you listened to this week. Think of some of the magazines, books, some of the things you looked at, some of the places your eyes went. Did you exclude him? Did the Spirit of God see that and go, wow, yeah, that's real fleshy? No. You just, you quenched him. You kept him out. Watch me now. And the more you do that, the more you get used to it. Don't exclude him. You say, well, I did it accidentally. You don't put a fire out on accident. Whoops. I mean, you, you deliberately, that's the goal. You take steps to do that. And the Holy Spirit, listen to me, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of God naturally burns in your spirit unless you or I do something to quench him. Like, let me give you a couple for instances. We ignore God's word. Are you listening to me now? Say, do you know what time it is? I'm staring at the clock. You're not. You don't have to ask me what time it is. Are you ignoring what's being said? Say, well, we're supposed to get out of here at 8. Who, who, who said? Hey, I'm done with that too. Well, you know, we've got work. we got you sleeping all morning. Well, that's true too, but... You know, you can endure a few minutes. We ignore God's word. We refuse to deal with our sin. Boy, I hate dealing with my sin. I love dealing with yours. Hey, I am an expert. I'm, I'm an expert spec inspector. But I'm a horrible beam inspector. Say, well, aren't beams easier to see? You'd think so. But it's much more fun to see your specs. That's subliminal, too. I'm trying to subliminally brainwash you. I want you to go, yeah, yeah, yeah. We ignore God's word. We refuse to deal with our sin. We nurse being bitter. A lot of bitter Christians, mad about something. Well, one time, you know, I heard it this way. Yeah, I, I just, I, I don't do that because I, you know what happened? You remember when Jesus died on the cross, everything you did, he, he died for. So everything everybody else did, he died for that too. So do you know how dumb it is? To nurse bitterness? Don't exclude the spirit. Number two. I, this one's my favorite. It says despise not prophesying. Do you, want, you know what that means? Don't exclude preaching. Go to church. Listen to preaching. Say God speak to me. I don't care how spiritual you think you are. I know, your wife knows, your husband knows, your kids know, your neighbors know you're not perfect. So don't give me this, I, you, do you know how godly I am? I know how godly you aren't. 
don't exclude preaching. Don't, he says despise it. Don't treat it like, like it's nothing. And we have to be careful of that because we don't think Paul wrote to Timothy, man, those are, those are wild, I'm sorry, those are wild words, 2 Timothy 4. And remember what he said? He said, the time will come, 2 Timothy 4, 3, the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. They'll heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. I didn't say that. God said that. He said they shall turn away their ears from the truth. Wow. Hey, they will turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. He told them in verse 2, though, preach the word. I have in my Bible next to that verse, shout out the news. Preach the word. If you start filtering what you hear from God, you're going to shut down your spiritual growth. Hey? And you'll have what Paul told Timothy, a form of godliness denying the power thereof. You'll think you're spiritual. You'll think others think you're spiritual. But you'll be a Pharisee. When you go to the doctor, you don't want to hear if you have a problem. You want him to go, man, you're doing great. You don't want to hear we saw something. You can ignore him, though, if you want, but you don't, do you? Because a lot of people worship, just listen to what I'm saying, a lot of people worship their body and they neglect their spirit. I don't want to die. I, you'd be better off dying sooner with the right spirit. Don't exclude preaching. When somebody tells you the truth, whether it's me or somebody else, when somebody tells you the truth about your spiritual life, do what you can to fix it. Admit it's broken. Don't exclude the spirit. Don't exclude preaching. And then he says in verse 21, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Don't exclude judgment. Every time you hear something, you should test it. Well, you know, so and just because so-and-so said it doesn't mean it's true. The Bible is the only true measurement of truth. When he says, Verse 21, prove all things. Hold fast. Embrace it. You're at the doctor. He finds your problem. He tells you what to do. You go home. You rejoice that you know the problem. Are you well? Got to fix it. Got to fix it. Number four. We're done. See how... Nice that went. Number four, don't exclude. He uses the word abstain. Abstain from all appearance of evil. I call that being careful. Don't exclude carefulness. I want to be careful in how I live for God. Hey, I want to be careful. I, I want others to think of God. I don't want to think about me. I want to think about him. I want to avoid anything. I want to be careful of anything that would look evil. Okay? Like white pens. Oh, bro, I do. Somebody else did. So, you know, if they tell me I ought to color my hair, I'm not doing that. But I... Just listen to me a minute. 
in order to be able to hold on to what's good, we need to avoid the things that are evil or appear to be evil. Look at me, look at me, look at me. Because I'm, I'm a, you're going <coughs> to, I'm telling you, a little bit of evil, excuse me, <coughs> a little bit of evil is as bad, don't give me water because we're almost done, okay? Don't get up. Just put up with what I'm going through, would you? Don't be distracted by that. I kissed my wife today, and this is what happened. <laughs> Thought the cooties were gone. Not really. Watch now. Don't get distracted. A little bit of evil is as bad as a little bit of poison. If I said a glass of water, I put one drop of poison. Evil will destroy your spiritual growth. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Can I say this as we close? I want you to hear this. I don't want to be guilty in my life of limiting God. I want God to be unlimited in my life. I want to read his word. I just want him to teach me everything he wants me to see. I want to do everything he wants me to do. I want to pray like he wants me to pray. I want to witness to who am I supposed to witness to. I want to give what he wants me to give. I want him to live in me, but I want to be careful that I don't ignore him because that's possible. It's possible that he's in me and that I... I Neglect him. That's why we have an invitation. I don't want to just say, well, there's the word of God going your way. No, tonight you're going to be challenged. You won't walk, but you're going to be challenged. So, so hear me. If you limit God, you and I, if I limit God, we are the losers. God can do so much. You need him, hey? Some of you, you really need him. So don't limit him. Let the spirit of God work. Let the preaching work. Just, just allow that to be a part of your life all the time. Don't judge it. Don't, don't get into, well, you know, I, well, I think. Just let God speak to your heart. Your head bowed, your eyes closed. Every head bowed, every eye closed. You say tonight, God, God, you're speaking to me. You're speak I don't want to exclude you. I don't want to exclude you working. I don't want to exclude you using the preaching of your word. I don't want to exclude you by allowing something in my life that shouldn't be there. I, I, I want you to be unlimited. In my life, I don't want to limit you or try to limit you. I want you to be unlimited in my life all the time. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Say, God, that's my prayer. Here's my hand. That's my prayer. That's my prayer. That's my prayer. Mean it. Mean it. Don't just do the hand for me or you. Just mean it. Mean it. I, I want God to work in an unlimited way in my life. I didn't raise it, but I'm raising it now. I, I want God to know that. If you see it, fine. This is for God. This is for God. I want God to work unlimited in my life. I don't want to limit him in any way. Dear Lord Jesus, please work. Work in an unlimited way in our lives, how we need it, how the world needs it. We'll be so much better off if we would let you just live all that you want to live and be unlimited in our lives all the time, every day, in everything. Man, what an effect that could have on this world. Help us, God. I pray, I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.